So can you please say and spell your name? Sure. My name's Carol Wagner. It's C-A-R-O-L-W-A-G-G-E-N-E-R. -E and I'm the founder and head keg washer at the Bold Missy Brewery. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Awesome. Well, today's Thursday, July, sorry, Thursday, June 14th, 2018. Um, and we're here at Bold Missy Brewery in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you, Carol, for talking with us. Thank you. It's um, an honor to be here. Thanks. Fun. So to start, can you just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from and yeah. how did you get to where you are? Uh, well, I, uh, I'm originally from Florida. I grew up in Sarasota and um, my first job was at Tropicana Orange Juice. And so when I would come into work every morning, my boss would pop up over his cube and go, look out everybody, here comes the Bold Missy. <laughs> So that's kind of where the Bold Missy Brewery nickname came from. Um, and so from Tropicana, I had moved around quite a bit and I had a position in Salt Lake City and I sat next to the Anheuser-Busch rep. And so their company was going through a lot of transition. And so he said, well, you know, got some jobs back in St. Louis. Do you have any interest? I said, yeah. So I ended up um, starting my beer career at Anheuser-Busch in St. Louis. And um, so I was there for about uh, about a year and a half in St. Louis, and then I was transferred to Phoenix in a sales role, and then I was transferred to Charlotte in another sales role. So that's kind of what brought me to Charlotte, and and it's probably Charlotte's probably been the longest place I've ever lived in my career, and I just think it's an incredible city. It's just a great place to be, and it has an amazing beer scene. So when I moved to Charlotte, and I had been here about five years. InBev came in and bought Anheuser Busch, and so. Um, you know, there was a lot of reorganization, restructuring, and I was restructured out. So I still had this incredible love of beer, um, but I didn't know, really know how to, you know, what to do with that, you know. So I have gone to work for another local company called Snyder's Lance. If you've ever had a Snyder's pretzel or a Lance cracker, that's, that's us. Yeah. And uh, now we were recently bought by Campbell's, so now it's Campbell's Snacks. So uh, I had been with them, and I was on a pub crawl over in South End. And I was sitting at Triple C, and I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to get back into beer. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so that kind of started my journey um, of you know, putting the brewery together. So from there, I knew I ne needed a lot of education. Yeah. Because you can't just say, oh, I'm going to start a brewery, you know, <laughs> and off you go. The bank just doesn't give you money for that kind of stuff. So um, I went to Siebel Institute in Chicago. They had a three-day seminar and start your own brewery. So I took that and it just kind of scratched the surface of what I needed to understand and learn. And throughout this, throughout the process, also I just visited as many breweries as I could, kind of understood what I liked about them, what size I liked, um, their marketing and how they talked to their consumers and, and different things like that. And then I also went to Portland State and had a 24-week program, the business of craft beer. So all of those things together helped me build my business plan and get my financials together and was able to secure a uh, SBA loan from Wells Fargo. And so we had the money and then we found a place and you know, sort of, it's not really the rest is history, but that's the space that we're in now is, is right. the brewery. We've been open for a year. Uh, two weeks ago, we had our one year celebration, so. And about how long, how long would you say you went from having that initial, this is what I want to do thought to mm -hmm. opening the doors? Probably four years. It was about a four-year process. It was about a four-year journey because, you know, you get excited about it, you get fired up, and then you, when you start looking at the financials of it and where am I going to get this money to start this because it's extremely capital intensive. Um, that kind of, you make progress, you stall, and, and then you really, really have to decide if this is your passion or not if you're going to, you know, go after this. Mm -hmm. So so you've had kind of a diverse work background before yeah. deciding to start the brewery, some related to beer and some not. Right. Um, how does kind of the craft brewing entrepreneurial side of things compare to the other places you've worked or what, what have you taken from those other places and been able to apply here? Um, I guess the experience of the overall beer industry, you know, helped me a lot because I understood from Anheuser-Busch the importance of quality. You know, they found that in your head and they live and breathe it. So you can say what you want to about them as a company. They are very focused on quality. Um, the other thing I learned from uh, Gussie Bush is that um, making friends is our business. That was his slogan. And it's very relationship-driven business. So you've got to be able to connect with people and connect with them on a very genuine level. And so those are two, two traits that you have to take into the craft beer world. You have to focus on quality 
because it's not just you know hey I made this beer and it, here you go it's it absolutely has to be you know well crafted delicious beer and then the second part is this relationships and being very genuine and being able to connect with people and that's what I love about the craft beer business as well is the ability to be you know connect with people yeah um, so are there some specific people that kind of stand out along the path that you would consider to be your mentors helping you kind of transition into the craft beer ownership entrepreneurial um, space? I've had so many mentors, I, you know, they're kind of tough to rattle off, you know, when I worked at Anheuser-Busch, um, you know, I, I had, I was on the Kroger, on the Kroger business for a while, and it was, his name was Bill Peisker, and he would call himself the beer genius, and so, you know, just, but very relationship oriented, um, just a terrific guy, you know, I just, I've been very blessed with great uh, mentors along the way, and, and then in building the business plan, um, just had some, some great friends that would read it for me and say, I think you're on track here, I think you're not. Um, you know, Charlotte is a really, it's a very big small town, so people are very connected, so I got connected to um, my attorney, and he connected me with a tax accountant, and then he connected me with an insurance guy, and and you know even those those, those roles sound kind of dry and boring and business like they gave me great insights and great support and my financial advisor was one of the best supporters out there I said you know I'm putting my whole life savings into this thing I know you're here to talk me out of it and he's like no you know let's look at it if this is your passion and you think this can work go for it so I had a really great long list of and then you know my family and my friends have just been incredibly supportive too yeah so you have to have a strong foundation of support to in order to you know, do something like this for sure definitely yeah um so you mentioned that you were in charlotte before mm -hmm. you know opening how around when did you come here to charlotte i came to charlotte in let's see i've been here 14 years i guess so in 2005 so you've seen an awful lot of changes oh, in terms of the beer scene here. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, because you know when I first got here, you know, you've got your Anheuser Busch goggles on. You know, you really do not, you do not drink another type of beer. <laughs> you do not talk about other types of beer. You drink Anheuser Busch products. That's it. So for five years, I didn't really pay any attention to it, you know, because I was so focused on on Budweiser. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, kind of after I got let go, I was obviously a little upset by that. So <laughs> I never drank another Anheuser Busch product again. <laughs> And so that kind of, I didn't drink beer for a long time. And then I got back into beer because it's a great beverage. And so that's what started me drinking more craft beers because, you know, everywhere you go would be, you know, the mainstream beers. And, I, and so I really um, sort of tended towards the, um, the beers that were the craft beers. So, you know, you used, Old Mecklenburg was one of the ones that had just started out, um, Node obviously, and then Triple C. And that was pretty much it. But everywhere I would travel, I traveled quite a bit. Everywhere I travel, I would go to different breweries. Hmm. And really, and Asheville is just out right up the street and took many a brewery tour there and kind of saw the different models of success and things. Yeah. So that's what, you know, kind of got me more into the craft beer side of it. Right. So um, you've talked a little bit about this already but um, you know you decided to open or that you wanted to open a brewery mm -hmm. you've got your your name that's your nickname from yep. work uh, as the the name for the brewery but what do you kind of see as kind of the main mission or theme of Bolt Missy? I gave when I was working on the business plan I mean obviously I wanted to spend a lot of time working on the vision and the mission of, of the of the business because I saw this as a great opportunity to take something and make it very creative and make it something that other people would be drawn to. Because you know, when you get into corporate America and you look at somebody's mission statement or their values, you could probably write it on the back of a napkin. You could say, honesty, integrity, quality, you know, and you're just like, oh, you know. So, you know, I gave a lot of thought to what, what I wanted to, to come up with. So, you know, the mission is really simple, is to win the affection and the love of charlatans and by providing a quality beverage but then you get into what our values are is like is you know um you know passion and you know bring passion and fun with with growth profitability that's something we want to have all the time is make sure you still have your passion and fun but make sure you balance it with the growth and profitability and then the other part of it too is reach out and bring it in is a big one so that's mostly about taking care of your co-workers taking care of your community and you know bringing people in um, so those are the things that you know we try to get through. I think the thing, the thing that really has been amazing to me that I need to work more into the values is um, 
it started off as kind of, you know, as our marketing theme of honoring famous bold missies. And this has really just strung a, a chord with so many people of, you know, oh, you should, you know, we came up with the initial bold missies of, you know, Amelia Earhart and for Solo Flight, you know, Rocket Ride is for Sally Ride, Get Your Gun Golden is for Annie Oakley. And it just, it, you know, those are, those were just great themes and great, you know, image, imagery. But people have come to us and said, "Well, you need to name a beer for this person, or you need to name a beer for that person, or oh, here's who's my favorite bold missy." And and it has really, you know, with the Me Too movement and everything that's been going on with empowering women, people have looked to to looked for me to be very like outspoken on what my views are as far as you know women's causes and things like that. There's something I never saw coming. I really didn't. I thought I'd open this. Great little brewery and we'd have a great time and it'd be awesome but now it's like well as a bold missy what do you think about this yeah. <laughs> so it's really it has really taken a lot of life of its own and yeah. um so it's been and from my perspective of it i want it to be a positive message i don't want to say oh the man held me down and you know because everybody a lot of people have those stories and they're horrible and you don't want to you know you you want to appreciate them and my my goal is to move forward from that let's highlight the women who are the bold missies who have done it their way and be inspired by them and move it forward in a positive way yeah so that's so how do you go about um selecting who you're naming the it's beer uh after? it's funny like it's like it's i had this little speech <laughs> that i gave to the to our staff of four on monday you know so i'm a big oprah super soul sunday watcher and they just roll their eyes up there they're like, oh, what did oprah say last sunday you know so anyway so this was my i'll try to condense it but my little speech on monday was when we think about bold missies um it was it was elizabeth gilbert and oprah were talking about the hero's journey so the hero's journey is basically, you know, a youngster that's restless and trying to find their way in the world. And, and then they get called to the journey, you know, whether they can either say no to it or they can say yes to it. And then they go off on the road of trials and tribulations and then um, they find their mentors. And then at the end, you know, they conquer their fear. And so that should be sort of the filter for the Bold Missies that we pick because we were trying to kick around a new Bold Missy for a beer we're going to release in July. So we talked about Betsy Ross. Because, you know, 4th of July, you know, and so I was like, well, did she go on the hero's journey, you know, or did she just make a flag and call it good? <laughs> right? So it's, you know, they think I'm nuts, but, you know, I probably put way too much thought into it. But, you know, our, our customers come to us with great ideas. You know, you need, we did a contest with our one year anniversary, we did a spinoff of all of our core beers, and we did a contest to name a beer, and one of our, uh, our guests came up with uh, Chai and Malala. Which was fantastic. Oh, so, that's very cool. For a chai brown. It was fantastic and stuff. So, I mean, just, um, you know, our staff comes up with uh, names all the time and people that inspire them or people that are, you know, kind of fun and, and are easy to celebrate. Well, not easy to celebrate, but we had, we did a sour and it was a, it was a blonde strawberry sour. And so we were talk, talking about, oh, we love Blondie and our music and stuff like that. So we called it, you know, the heart of glass for the Blondie song. And, you know, people get excited. They're like, oh, my God, there's a great bowl missing, you know. So there's so many people pull from history, pull from current things. Yeah. A lot of different ways to name, name women. Yeah. But I go back to the hero's journey, even though I drive everybody crazy with that. So. <laughs> Well, you guys um, also have really cool and distinctive art to oh, go with yeah, each one yeah. of the beers. Can you we talk do. a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah, like when I had had the vision for the Bold Missy Brewery, I had um, I pulled a, a image off of the internet, and it was like three women, kind of like it was mid-century. You know, they were sitting around their sunglasses and kind of these hipster things by this pool, and I just thought that's kind of cool. You know, I love the mid-century you know artwork and stuff like that. And so I talked to, sent that to a graphic designer that I, his name's Don Jones out of Pittsburgh, and he said, "Well, this is really great. You I know, mean, what if we?" did like paperback novel you know hero heroines type things and so he took that and just went off with it it was amazing so he helped create the some of the names he helped create the imagery and then he had one of his graphic designs or designers also worked on some um uh is it george hamilton who's the star wars guy george i think it's george. lucas george lucas he was an artisan for george lucas oh and he helped 
fill in some of the coloring and things like that. I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. So yeah, so the latest one that we worked with, it was really awesome because our bold Missy was alive. So, you know, we're like, you're hard. And, you know, and you can't do anything that looks like anybody in particular because you don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Well, it was for Allison Levine, and Allison Levine is alive and kicking, which is great. So, she, and I saw Allison at the Craft Brewers Conference. She gave um, was a keynote speaker, hmm. so she was the uh, captain of the first all women's team to try Summit Everest, and she's also an Adventure Grand Slam person. So she summited all seven peaks and seven continents, and she skied to the North Pole and skied to the South Pole, and she's written a you know best-selling book about leadership. So. We saw her and, and uh, you know, inspired, you know, what a great bull Missy. So afterwards, uh, we caught her, we, you know, kind of, a, you know, I don't know, a, we, did, you know, we just approached her and said, hey, we're with the bull Missy Brie, we'd love to name a beer for you. And so she was super excited. And I said, what kind of beer do you like? She's like, anything with chocolate. So we did the chocolate stout. So we had stayed in contact via email. So she named it Conquer the Route Chocolate Stout. And I said, well, you know, do you mind if we use your likeness on the label with something that, you know, you know, something, you know, one of your um, polar, polar Explorer pictures? And she said, no, that'd be great. So you see the label that we've got. We've got it on our T-shirts and stuff like that. It's actually her, oh, you very know, cool. her image um, doing one on one of her expeditions. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then we, you know, turned it into like this paperback novel kind of look. And oh, stuff. very cool. So it's really cool. So fun. Has she had a chance to drink any of it? She came to the um, launch party, which Very is fantastic. Cool. We sold tickets, and uh, she's doing a documentary about um, a uh, the first Nepalese woman to summit Everest. And so I said, well, we'll do this launch party and we'll sell tickets and the proceeds will go to your documentary. So we did that and she came and she launched the beer. She did the first pour of the chocolate stout. And I mean, it's just so incredibly fun, you know? Yeah. It just was great. We just had a ball. That is awesome. Yeah, it really was. It was awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. So kind of rewind a little bit back to the planning and opening. Mm. Can you describe a little bit where we are in Charlotte and maybe why this is an area that works well for you or that you selected? Well, it's funny because in Charlotte, it's really tough to find a building. It's tough to find the space because it has to have I-2 zoning. Um, you know, you, will, you want the high ceilings. You want a good foundation of a floor. Um, you know, you want to have the building to have the power to support the equipment and all these other different things. So it's not, so it is a very kind of particular type of building that you want. And like in most of Charlotte, the I-2 zone buildings are in warehouse type neighborhoods. And that's how Old Mecklenburg got their start. And even, you know, down the street in Noto, the same thing is, you know, much more I-2 zoning. So I had looked and looked, and this was the, you know, the craft beer scene was taking off over in South End. So I looked all through South End and I had looked... Um, you know, tried to look at different neighborhoods that I thought would be a good fit. And Noda, my realtor's like, there's no way you're going to get into Noda because of the light rail, you know, because it, the square footage would be too high. So anyway, so I was driving around and and saw this building or whatever. I was driving around with my brewery consultant and we were, he was in town and we were looking at buildings and stuff. <laughs> so we saw this homeless guy out front just like relieving himself on the building and my my consultant's like that's it that's the spot and I was like uh okay he's like no I'm serious so anyway I came down to look at and there were bars on the windows and you know I had this image in my mind I was like really I said you know you got to have a strong vision but it actually it was um my landlord had his cabinet making the shop here so it had the power it had the floors. I mean, we gutted the building, but it had everything you really needed. And I was like, and then uh, found out that the light rail had plans to come down this way. I was like, ah, you know, the light rail coming, and you know, this this is going to turn, and this is going to be a great spot. So yeah. that's how we landed here. So, oh, very cool. Yeah. So you've kind of touched on some of these already um, a little bit, but can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you face opening a new brewery, like? specifically related to the brewery yeah I mean I think there's I mean there's so many challenges that you know you just don't even see coming you're like oh <laughs> you know yeah I didn't see that coming you know so I think that one of the one of the toughest challenges honestly is um, the permits that you have to get and the inspections that you have to get and all those different things because each of those delay you by quite a bit um, my favorite story is we had one inspector come out and so you know in Charlotte you know they want more green space so you, they tell you you have to plant these trees 
<laughs> on your on your property and you have to build a sidewalk my sidewalks out there but it doesn't go anywhere <laughs> but they don't make it easy on you you know on some of these things so I had one inspector came out and came back and failed us because our trees two of our trees were buried four inches too deep and so they had literally gone out there with the trowel and dug it up and like had measured and so we had to go back out there with shovels, you know, and replant these two trees. And that took us another two weeks to get part of our inspection to before you can do the next step. So, yeah. you know, just, you know, I, Gwinnett County came in and they were asking, you know, about breweries. And I was on a panel about that. I said, if you really want to attract breweries, make it easier for them yep. for crying out loud. I mean, they're there to grow the business. I mean, you know, we kind of came in and you now the neighborhood's starting to turn. Breweries are great places to have in neighborhoods that are looking to be more you know green and community friendly and all those different things so you just a lot of challenges around the city and just trying to open open the room and stuff like that you know and the other thing too is you know there's so many challenges just getting the equipment in the front door <laughs> you know it comes on this big trailer tractor and you don't think you think oh this is great this is gonna get my equipment and then i'm thinking well how am i gonna get it to stand upright it's all in the building now <laughs> and uh, now i guess i better find a rigger that's gonna actually set them up you know yeah. just so many things you're like oh i got my equipment and you're just like oh yeah that's another thousand dollars down the street the cost is unbelievable what yeah. you have to you, you really need to have a huge bucket of extra money that you don't plan for for stuff like that you know yeah so. um and you mentioned this before we started recording but you have you know relatives who are working here or at least yeah. a niece who's working here with yeah. you had, had, had has that been the plan since the beginning to kind well, of have family you know, it was funny because or did it just work out perfectly no well it, a little <laughs> bit of both probably so you know, when I started the brewery, I would tell my friends and family, I'm going to start a brewery. They're like, oh, good for you. That's great. And then they'd say, is she really going to start a brewery? She's not going to start a brewery. You know, <laughs> you know it's ridiculous, you know, and stuff. And so my niece, so I come from a family of engineers. So my dad was an engineer. My brother and sister are both engineers. And Libby's, my niece's family, same thing, all engineers. And we're the ones that are a little bit more business, a little bit more creative-minded and stuff. So I was like, Libby... I'm gonna open this brewery and you're gonna come down and help me run. She's like, okay. <laughs> so she she was uh, she's fantastic. She's my secret weapon millennial. She knows what millennials like. She knows the Instagram, the social media. We put ridiculously funny things out there, and it has nothing to do with me. It's all Libby and and the team that we have is you know just very. Uh, funny and creative and brings a lot of passion and excitement yeah. to it and I'm really blessed that I had a niece that was excited about doing it yeah and so it's always nice to have family too to keep an eye on the money <laughs> that usually and is a helpful, gonna, yeah. helpful to have somebody do that but I have an amazing team I mean we're just all there I'm very blessed with great people so. how many folks do you have on staff now. Well, our executive leadership team <laughs> there you go. is comprised of five of us. So we've got myself and then Libby, our um, brewmaster, Carly, who you met, um, Heather is um, our one sales rep, and then Joe's our other sales rep. So, And then we have probably about 10 part-time um, you know, beer tenders. And, the, and we also have a great chef, uh, Sydney, in the kitchen. So, and the beer tenders all have real jobs, and they, I'm blessed to have them because they all love to come here because it's so, uh, such a change of pace from their real jobs, and they always have so much fun when they're here and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I pride myself. Well, I have a lot of pride in our team that they're, every time we get a, you know, a review, it always says super friendly staff, and that's what I want. And, you know, sometimes some breweries can be very intimidating about, oh, this is special craft beer, oh, and just take themselves too seriously. But, you know, we take our beer seriously, but not ourselves and our staff is super friendly and tries to try to educate people on whatever they would like yeah. you can come in here and tell me that you don't drink beer and I'll by the end by the end by the time you leave I will at least get you to try some beers you know and stuff so it's fun yeah yeah um you mentioned the chef have y'all had a kitchen kind of as part of the well, well has um, that always been part of no, the plan? that was another budget thing I was oh. like oh let's put a kitchen in how much could that possibly be <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> What, a couple thousand bucks? We get a panini machine? Call it good? Just need a crock pot in yeah, the corner. Yeah, get a crock pot and panini machine. The health department is totally fine with that. So, anyway, so I had... Um, I had talked to, you know, my brewery consultant, his name is Mark Martin, he's from Portland, Oregon, and this guy is just absolutely ridiculous, I mean, he's, um, he's just really funny, and 
and he's like, every time, oh, I got a great idea for you. I got a great idea for you. And I said, I said well, he's like, wait, do I tell you about your menu? And I was like, okay. So he strung me along and strung me along. So I'm thinking to myself, wow, it's going to be something really spectacular. He's like, hot dogs. I'm like, that's it? Hot dogs? He said, yeah, yeah, hot dogs. And I was like, well, okay. And so, you know, I didn't want a fryer because you you've got to put in a grease trap and all these different things. And I just wanted really something very simple. And so, something that would keep people in the seats longer. And I drink more beer. That's where the money is. So anyway, so that's kind of what led us to the kitchen. And so we did go on this. I went online and I searched the top 100 hot dog places across America. And I studied their menus and I stole the best hot dogs off the menus. So one of them, that's one of our best sellers, it's called a hound dog. And so it's peanut butter, bacon, and honey. And you'd be like, hey, no way is that good. But trust, we even have on the menu, trust us. And that's our number one selling hot dog. So we try to do like fun kind of gourmet hot dogs. And we also do flatbreads because there's super easy and there's something I really like to enjoy and then we've got great soft pretzels and we have like a gourmet mustard and beer cheese with it so just some really um it's not kind of like you know, it's not like your typical hot dogs or typical snacks you know we try to put our little spin or twist on it and just give something you know for people that order and enjoy and yeah. stuff. we have a lot of people that take our food to go and it's like that's awesome you know they like it well enough to take pick it up and take it home so yeah it's, it's yeah well and it kind of sounds like the the mentality behind that matches the mentality behind absolutely the beer yeah yeah of absolutely fun fun yeah um so can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, and this is probably an impossible question, but like a typical day around the brewery? Um, I'm probably a terrible person to ask about that because I have like a very, I don't have a typical day because I'm still doing my day job and this. Oh. So I am still trying to keep my lights on at home and my lights on at the brewery. So I have not let go completely of my, my day job. So my job consists of getting up very early and starting to work on things for Campbell Snacks and um, selling to Foodline is my customer, which is a major customer. And so I have a strong obligation to that and I'm very dedicated to that. And then afterwards, you know, last night I ended up in the kitchen on a kitchen shift. <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks ago, Carly was swamped in the back room. So I sit back there with cleaning kegs and helping transfer beer and kegging beer. And then, you know, a couple of weeks after that, you know, we just, you, you just never know. So there really isn't a typical day. I mean, probably Carly and Libby have more typical days, but my days are just kind of all over the place. And a lot of days I'm, or, and when I say day, I really mean evening and weekends and nights and stuff is doing the books, doing the accounting, you know, um, paying for the equipment, all these different things. So, yeah. Yeah. So I don't have a good, that's probably why I like it so much too. It's like, it's, it's something different all the time. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is Bold Missy's kind of signature beer? Do you guys have a beer that you consider your signature well, beer? Well, it's funny because like we, my vision for this was to have well-loved styles of craft beer. So, you know, I've been to so many breweries where they kind of, they had, went to one brewery, they brewed with scorpions or they would make the world's most sour, sour beer, you know, things like that, or the IPA that would just hit you in the face. And so that's really, I was like, there's really still a market for well-loved, well-made craft beer. So we have a great wheat, we have a great IPA, we have an amazing brown, we have a golden, and then we get into our seasonals and the brewer's batch, and that's where we can play around and have a lot of fun. So I would say we just kind of, you know, when everybody's like, well, what do you think your flagship's going to be? And I didn't really, well, I figured the customers would tell us what the flagship's going to be. So the flagship is starting to turn into the find a way wheat because it's a really nice Belgian style wheat and it's brewed with tangerine peels and tangerine puree. So it's just like, just hits the sweet spot of being just a really del drinkable, delicious beer. So that's probably getting into more of our mainstream, but some of the beers that you know, we have kind of, we monkeyed around a little bit with some barrels, so we took our chocolate stout, the Conqueror the Route, and put it in a barrel, and uh, so we just tapped that for the one year anniversary, so that was really nice. Carly had, did a collaboration with some friends of hers from San Diego that were in town, and from a brewery called Three Punks Ale, which is really funny, and they're the ones that, that helped um, brew the kettle sour. And so, you know, we're, we're just trying to do different things and try to, because in craft beer, it's, it's all about what's new. You'd be like, oh, what do you got? What's new? And then you'd be like, okay, well, let's try this and let's try that. Yeah. So it's, you can't just say this is kind of our standards, but, you know, so far the, the wheat, you know, find a way wheat. Which and is, who is the find a way wheat? That's for Diana Nyad. She swam from Cuba to Florida. And she did it at age 64. 
Wow. Yeah, after she had multiple attempts throughout her life. And, you know, she had failed many times from, like, you know, jellyfish and sharks and all kinds of things. And uh, so she's an incredible person. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so you've mentioned that Bold Missy just recently celebrated its first anniversary. Mm -hmm. So kind of looking back on your expectations and hopes from a year prior mm -hmm. when you guys opened, are there any kind of big surprises that stand out to you or anything that you just didn't anticipate or expect? Yeah, I mean, I do think the biggest surprise, honestly, was people wanting to feel inspired by what we had created. Uh, we were, before we had even opened, we were the water sponsor at, at a beer festival. And you know, just get our name out there early and things like that. And this one young woman came up to me, she goes, and it, it was in February, just after the election. And she came up to me, she was like, what are we gonna do for the next four years? <laughs> like, I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna try to make beer. But you know, obviously she was asking me this huge question about politics and how, what's gonna happen with our, with, you know, society and things yeah. like that. It's like, okay, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but let's stay positive here, you know? So yeah. that has hands down been the biggest surprise. Like we have a lot of women's groups that come in that love using the Bold Missy as their space, you know, for meetings. And we have a lot of women entrepreneurs that come in, same idea, they want to use our space for, for that. Um, yeah. So that has really been a, a surprise and a really happy surprise. Um, and a, a real blessing to be able to provide a space and a, and a beverage that really resonates with people. And to be able to continue that on with, have a platform that you can celebrate, you know, a famous, you know, a woman who has accomplished a lot. Yeah. So not many people get the chance to do that. So it's yeah. a real blessing. So kind of tying off of what you just mentioned with folks, community groups using the space mm -hmm. and coming to the space, um, you know, community engagement is the thing that a lot of breweries yeah, absolutely. are engaged in. Can you talk about some of the work that you guys have yeah, done? so we started off and I had stolen this idea. It was called Drink One Down for Your Town. So it was supposed to be a monthly program where we would select a brewery or a selected cause or, a, you know, the charity would select us and we would do a dollar per pint. And it kind of, we tried to do like, script it and it kind of fell apart and now that I've now that we've been open for quite a while it's really has turned into definitely something that's more than once a month and it's evolved in a lot of different ways so um, we had one of our um, sales rep Heather had a friend who is in, very involved with long trails to happy tales or long tales to happy trails something like that <laughs> puppy adoption so we had you know hosted a puppy adoption and we gave a dollar per pint to the organization and you know two of our folks went home with puppies that day so <laughs> we have a couple new brew dogs out of it but since then we've had them back several times and helped adopt puppies like over the weekend we had uh, habitat for humanity came in same deal dollar per pint um and you know we just we love to you know support the community in any way we can and are happy to host meetings or do different things you know and you know give some type, type of donation give back to to the, the city that's been so great to us so that's what yeah. we try to do um so looking forward yes how are you hoping um how are you seeing bold missy growing in the future like what are yeah. your goals for the next few years well i've been really working on that so you know, I want to try to create a 10-year vision, like where do we think we're going to be in 10 years and have us all kind of looking towards that and then back it up three years and then back it up to a year or and even back it up to the quarter and be like, okay, what are we trying to get done, you know, with these different ranges of time and things like that. And, you know, the first year, it was all about drinking out of a fire hose. You know, we didn't know if our menu was going to work. We didn't know if people were going to like the beers that we were making. We didn't know if we were selling it to the right people. We didn't know, you know, you're just out there and you're just going to go for it and you're going to try it. And, and so year two is more about processes. And it's not sexy, but that's what's going to take us for the long haul is processes of what has worked for us. You know what is the what are the different steps that we can we can implement to get us to the get us to that ten years and what that looks like. So yeah. that's what we're working on now. And have you guys are are you mainly doing tap room business or are you also canning we and distributing? Are, we're not canning it. Whoops, sorry. We're not canning it. We're doing um, distribution of kegs in the market. I would love to start canning, but but we also have got to make sure that our product is perfect 
before we put it in a can. And we also have to make sure that we drive the awareness before they put that can on the shelf. Because God forbid we put something in that can that's not perfect. God forbid we put it on the shelf and nobody knows who it is and it sits there. And the retailer's never going to give us a second chance on that. So that's, I, I'm really super excited because I think our labels and everything will look so great in a can. But we also have to make sure we have the beer because we be honest with you, you know we've had had a couple days here and there where we've run out of beer because we just weren't ready for the ramp up that's also the other really big challenging thing and everybody will tell you that is like making sure you have enough product to sell or making sure you know that if you're not selling product what can you do to change that yeah so um so you kind of mentioned this already but you know in terms of you know being a woman in the craft brewing industry who also employs a lot of women mm -hmm. in the industry yeah. um, you know can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges but also the the benefits mm -hmm. for having a female largely female staff um, uh, you know do you think that there are things that you might have the leg up on when you're thinking um, or think you know things that you might face challenges you might be facing well I'm always uh, one another thing that surprised me was how people can people on social media that are anonymous and might have an issue with women-owned business they have a platform now to be very to tell you exactly what they think and we had a couple of reviews and a couple of things that came in that just really you know you got to have tough skin to be in the beer business anyway and so you know but that one took me a couple of days to get over <laughs> yeah. I was just really surprised at that and how um, they're they're in our society today you know it's just it gives people have this platform to be be ugly to you and so I've experienced that and I try not to dwell on it try to move on and things like that and stuff so I would say honestly it has you know it's hard to stand out in in the craft beer business right now because there are so many coming in there's you know craft breweries opening every day and having a female perspective and being known as a woman-owned brewery does set us apart so it's been a, a big positive for that and they also be able to highlight you know women's accomplishments and things like that to have a marketing and a message that resonates so well helps you stand out as well so I would say it's been more of an advantage than a disadvantage yeah um, would you have any specific advice for women looking to kind of enter this industry um, I would say I mean I would say if you're interested then go for it it is the most fun you'll ever have if you're sitting on a plane and somebody says to you what do you do for a living and you say I work for a brewery boom everybody gets excited they want to talk to you about it you get to meet amazing people you get to do amazing things you know you're never going to be rich but you're going to have a ball so it's if, if I would never let the uh, you know your gender hold you back from getting into this business because it's it is really fun and it's very unique so. yeah so what's your favorite part of being part of that craft beer industry um, I just think you know my favorite part is really having the the sense of community and you know I my favorite part is the culture that we built you know you put it when you're doing your plan you have a vision of what you want your culture to be but your culture you, you have some you set the tone and then you have to have the people embrace it and cultivate it and so that's the one thing that I just really enjoy is like the people that we hire um, that we bring in our, our guests and our you know our customers that that come in and enjoy it you know it's created a really fun culture a positive culture and that's that's the one thing that I just love about it definitely yeah um, so kind of big picture how do you how do you think the North Carolina kind of craft beer or even the local Charlotte if that's a better way to look at it scene where do you think it's going like um, five years down the road ten years even you know I think that I think everybody's like oh is it saturated you know that's like the million dollar well oh, is it saturate, saturated and then you know people had asked me that when I was you know working on it in 2014 and that was when there was eight breweries in town and now there's uh, almost 25 or 30 breweries in town so you know so I will say that the people of Charlotte will tell us when it's saturated yeah. not 
you know, we could end up with, you know, be like, you know, it could be like Portland where they have, you know, 100 within the city limits, you know. I don't know that it'll get to be that big in Charlotte, but it's obviously something that the community embraces. And when the, when the community says, nah, I think that's it, then you'll start to see, you know, unfortunately, probably some of us go off to do other ventures and things like that. Yeah. So. And Charlotte itself grows. Has Charlotte been growing. is growing like a weed. I was just talking to somebody who is uh, working on filling one of the giant apartments um, complexes down in, in Uptown. And I said, where are the people coming that are renting these places? I mean, it was $1,000 for like, you know, 600 square feet to live in. And I'm like, and she's like, believe me, they are coming. You know, they are coming. Yeah. So. So, um, do you have a favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than your own? Or even just a um, favorite beer today? My favorite beer today, I could probably answer it both. So, my favorite beer today is, is, has been my favorite beer for a long time, and that has to be Bell's Too Hearted. I just think that is the most well-balanced, delicious IPA I've ever had. And every time I take a drink of it, I like to smack my lips. I get so excited about having it. So, and that's why I, I also love Rocket Ride, which is our beer, which is a very um, well-balanced IPA. Um, so I think that's awesome. The other beers probably, I'm trying to think of somebody that has not been impacted by Anheuser-Busch because I used to love Wicked Weed. Um, I love Sierra Nevada uh, up in Asheville. I think they make amazing beers, but probably... Um, Probably locally, I would say I I always enjoy um, Triple C's. They always have delicious beers. I went to a newer place in Rock or Fort Mill called Amor Artis. Really delicious beers, very small batch beers and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, very cool. I like a lot of different types of beers, so it's kind of hard to pick one. It, that's usually the answer, yeah. honestly, that we get when we ask that question, right. folks. You yeah. know, you enjoy different styles, and sometimes you enjoy different styles on different days different days or different uh, times a day yeah <laughs> so what about here do you have a favorite rocket ride own? hands down rocket ride that's that's my baby i love that beer <laughs> can't help it so you know you're working a full-time job and you're doing this yes. so you probably don't have much free time right <laughs> but but in those spare free moments what do you like to do when you're not um, working I've got, I have an amazing dog named Bruno. He's a, he's a dachshund, and so I always enjoy spending time with Bruno, going around the block, touch, chatting with neighbors, checking in on things. Um, love to go to the beach, love to go to the mountains. I, I love to do a lot of things. My, you know, my passion is, for, is definitely traveling. I love to travel and yeah. stuff. So this past year is a little bit of a blur as far as like how much time I actually spent doing those things, but yeah. it's been good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So. Those are pretty much the questions that I was going to ask you. Is there anything else that we didn't hit on that you wanted to talk about? No, I don't think so. Think awesome. Yeah, I appreciate your well, time thank, today. Thank yeah. you so much. Sure.